Coming up on this week, we meet the new chancellor, a major festival is coming to campus, and we say farewell to two 20-year employees. Welcome to This Week at LSU Unis. We begin the first broadcast of the year with an introduction to LSU Unis' fourth chancellor. Dr. Kimberly Russell took over as chancellor on September 1st. Sage introduces you to Dr. Russell. Dr. Kimberly Russell began her term as Chancellor of LSU Eunice on September 4th. Russell came to Eunice from Tyler Junior College after Dr. William Nunez retired. Dr. Nunez served 19 years as Chancellor. Well, I was born in Northeastern Ohio and um, I come from a family, very humble background. My father had 13 brothers and sisters. Uh, he and his family could not afford to attend college. And I was the first uh, in my family to actually complete a college degree. I have one, one sibling, one brother. Um, since then, all have relocated to Texas. I grew up, for the most part, in uh, Longview, Texas. So I was very familiar with Shreveport and Northern Louisiana, a lot of places where we shopped and, uh, you know, uh, did a lot of extracurricular type of activities over there. So I'm very familiar with, with Louisiana. Russell attended Letourneau University in Longview, Texas before transferring to the University of Texas at Tyler. There she completed a degree in English and spent three years teaching in a high school outside of Longview. Later she attended the University of North Texas to work on her master's degree and was teaching English and developmental courses at Kilgore College. Decided I wanted to go back to school, wanted to be in a collegiate environment. So I did that. I attended the University of North Texas and worked on my master's degree in English while I was teaching at Kilgore College. I taught uh, the first uh, English 1301 and English 1302 and also a few uh, developmental courses for Kilgore College as well. And as I was working my way through my master's degree, I found that um, I really enjoyed that environment and wanted to stay in there, in it. And so uh, I began my doctoral program in higher ed administration. I uh, have a minor in economics. And that was also at University of North Texas. And there I had the opportunity to work with uh, the Vice President for Student Affairs at Letourneau University. And he felt like there might be a position available at that institution for a Director of Foundation and Corporate Relations. It was my first, uh, I guess, foray into um, development work where I learned how to write grants. I learned how to uh, raise funds from companies. Uh, that employed our graduates and also learned about foundation work and how, how all of that can be used to, to uh, help students succeed and really to meet the needs of, of our local business industry in the East Texas area. And so that's what I did for five years and from there moved uh, to a new position at, the, at Tyler Junior College uh, as, found, as the executive director of the foundation. Uh, had a long tenure there, uh, my first six years, just served as executive director of the foundation and began building on about an $8 million endowment. Um, had been very successful and then was promoted to vice president for advancement in external affairs where I first really had the chance to work more with students. I had enrollment management at the time, uh, admissions, financial aid, uh, all of those sorts of uh, student services. It was a lot of fun. Um, you know, Tyler uh, Junior College grew quite a bit during that period. Uh, ended my career there just this past month. Uh, we had about 12,000 students and we had an endowment of about $47 million. Russell has hit the ground running and has already mapped out her vision for the future of LSUE. It's been an entire week. This is, I'm beginning my second week uh, on the job. Uh, lots of things to learn for sure. I do have a learning curve when it comes to all things Louisiana. But I'm learning, uh, learning to love LSU. I think uh, what and what LSUE provides for students in this region. Uh, I'm thrilled to to be a part of it. I think some of our top priorities are going to be really how how are we going to increase our enrollment? How are we going to reach more students in this area? Whether that's through additional scholarship programs, whether that's through expanding our our current academic offerings so that students have more options when it comes to programs, whether that's to complete a two-year certificate, whether that's to complete a degree, or whether that's to transfer to LSU. Um, we hope to meet all of those needs. Uh, I think LSUE fulfills a, a special niche within uh, higher education in, in this state, 
and we want to become the, the premier two-year institution. Thanks, Sage. LSU Eunice, along with the Rotary Club of Eunice and the Jean Lafitte National Park, will host the Experience Louisiana Festival in October. The festival recently got a boost with a $23,000 grant from the National Park Service to bring folk-like demonstrations to campus. Well, the National Park Service, we are very excited to announce today that we're providing $22,000 for the Experience Louisiana Festival. Uh, that money is coming from our Lower Mississippi Delta Initiative, and that it is geared to encourage and inspire local cultures. The culture that we showcase here at the Prairie Acadian Cultural Center is special and unique to Eunice and St. Landry Parish, and we're so excited to partner with members of the community to draw more people and to educate them about what makes St. Landry Parish special, what makes Eunice special, and what makes Louisiana special to the United States. So we feel that this is one of the best investments we can make, especially as the National Park Service celebrates its centennial. This is the very sort of thing that we want to do to show the communities that we support that our support is, is, is placed right where it should be centered uh, in providing opportunities to better understand the, the history and heritage that makes America special. Over the summer, LSUE hosted a statewide firefighter conference. Firefighters from around the state came to campus to learn new techniques. This week we're going to be learning different leadership traits, how to survive as a manager and officers who actually command uh, young firefighters and who eventually will become the leaders within the organization. The conference attendants also learned firsthand about new technology used to fight fires. A simulation by LSU Fire and Emergency Training Institute demonstrated the use of thermal imaging in fighting fires. So this afternoon's live fire evolution, what we're going to do is this room is insulated for uh, up to 1800 degrees. We're going to light this uh, ordinary soap on fire and we're going to let the the room and contents start to reach the maximum temperature that they're going to, to give off with the door shut. At that point, the room is going to become ventilation limited. It's going to use up all of the oxygen in the room and the fire is going to start to diminish. After the fire starts to diminish, we're going to send that data in. Then we're going to open the door and simulate either uh, somebody doing good to reach in for the victims or the police making, ensure, making sure nobody's in there or the fire department opening the door with a hand line not ready to attack the fire. The fire is going to grow exponentially very rapidly up to about 1100 to 1200 degrees. At that point we're going to shut the door again, let the fire diminish down, blacken back down, become ventilation limited again, and Lee Hedgepeth is going to open the window and apply a short burst of water in a straight stream to the ceiling and the temperature is going to drop anywhere between seven to eight hundred degrees with a short burst of probably 10 to 15 gallons worth of water. And then we're going to come in and put the rest of the fire out. This is the second year that LSUE hosted the conference. Now, let's take a look at some upcoming important dates. Listen to me, Louisiana, I'm talking to you now. Come join me October 17th and 18th at the campus of LSU and Eunice for the Experience Louisiana Festival. Come experience Louisiana. You might even get to see me smile. LSU Eunice has rolled out a new certificate of technical studies. The new chemical technician, CTS, will require 34 credit hours and prepare students to use special instruments and techniques to help chemists and chemical engineer research develop and produce chemical products and processes. The program is the first of its kind in the state. Now, let's check in with Willie for sports. Bingo Athletics is about to be in full swing. Baseball has already started a fall ball with a double header against Delgado. They will be hosting an intra squad series later this week and softball will start their play Sunday against the Louisiana Bombers. Basketball will travel to a couple of scrimmages in October and start their 2015-2016 season October 30th against Roxbury Community College at the San Jacinto Classic. That's a look at sports. Back to you, Michaela. Thanks, Willie. Sioux librarians are retiring after working 20 years at LSU Eunice. We sat down with them to reminisce about their time here. 
Um, I drove here for an interview. I'd never been to Eunice. And I pulled in at the parking lot on, in the science building. And I looked around and I was like, oh my god. This is the most beautiful place. I really think I could work here. I really want to work here. And I went in for my interview with uh, Arlene Tucker. And I said, man, I think I did really good. And then she didn't hire me. <laughs> and then I got a call back from uh, Dr. Forrest. She interviewed me and I got the job 20 years ago. I had, I had uh, applied through civil service for the job and, and I started getting all these notices and, and LSUE was the first one that I chose to interview. So we made the arrangements and I came here and I, like Joan, felt like, man, this is an awesome campus. It was just so beautiful. Back then they had flowers everywhere and it was just really, really pretty. Mm -hmm. And so I got the job with uh, the library, interviewed with Dr. <laughs> Forrest, and uh, she calls me up and she says, there's a little problem. She said, we can't hire you before two weeks. And I had already quit my job. So I went to I went to them and I asked them if I could work two weeks longer. They said, no, that's okay. They were pretty upset with me that I was leaving them. And so I took a little break, you know, and, and came here and uh, worked in the library. I never changed from one one job with departments to another. I stayed in within the library. I've moved my offices so many times, don't can tell you they never knew where I was. Oh gosh. Well with circulation we used to hand stamp the due dates. Everything was done by hand and of course now we've got computers to do everything. It makes the job so much easier. Um, we we search for with the computer we we don't have any of those card catalogs any longer, and um, it's just, it's a much different place than it was 20 years ago. And we have e-books now that we didn't have 20 years ago either. And so, the, and we have a lot of backup help from Baton Rouge. So we have a lot of assistance, we have a lot of help, we have a lot of webinars and a lot of training. We still have training, you know. Just because you've been here a long time doesn't mean there's not training going on in the background, you know. I will be spending a lot of time with family, and I'll still have a little business for myself going at home, so I'm not going to be a couch potato. <laughs> and you? On Friday, I'm moving to Baton Rouge. We bought a house, my husband and I, so we'll be close to our children and our grandchildren, and I'm just looking forward to being back close to them again. And so are you going to set an alarm on Friday morning? I mean, on Monday morning? <laughs> No. You're just sleeping in? Not happening. <laughs> I don't oh, think I'm going to wear a watch. Oh, and then we're going to New Orleans for the weekend to celebrate as well. <laughs> yai yai. <laughs> no alarms. New Orleans will never be the same. No, I didn't cut that. <laughs> I'm going to miss uh, the people, you know, that are... I like the team as well. Yeah. I really do. So I'm I'm a little apprehensive about that. I don't, I don't know. I've always had... Routine. I always had to get up in the morning and go to work, so this is going to be strange for me. But um, I'm going to miss my co-workers a lot. Uh, they've been in my life for 20 years. We've gone through like family. so much yeah. together. Oh yeah. And of course, it's all going to be different now. Yeah. But I think Joan knows more about me than some of my family. <laughs> <laughs> and I've sworn to secrecy. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's it for this week at LSU Eunice. We'll be back in two weeks for another look at what's happening around campus. We leave you with a video from the Cajun Prayer Restoration Project and Eunice founded by LSUE professors. Currently, over 50,000 blazing stars are in full bloom.